All right, 83, we have a particle that moves along a straight line with velocity is given by the equation V of T is equal to five plus E to the one third T for time T is greater than or equal to zero. What is the acceleration of the particle at time T equals four? Okay, so acceleration is simply the derivative of velocity. So we simply just have to find the derivative of velocity at t equals four. So we just want to find v prime of four. And for that, we just can um, evaluate and plug it into your calculator. So let's go to the um, calculator screen, go to the um, menu, calculus, and numerical derivative at a point. Variable the x at four. We'll enter our equation five plus e to the x over three, and let's see what we get. A one point two six four five. Okay, so the answer is C. All right. 84, a home uses fuel oil at the rate R of T is equal to 10 plus eight sine of T over 60 gallons per day, where T is the number of days from the beginning of the heating season. To the nearest gallon, what is the total amount of fuel used from T equals zero to T equals 60 days? Okay, so what you essentially wanna understand and what they're, uh, what I assume they're trying to assess is that you understand that when you integrate the rate, that'll lead you back to the original function. So, so if we wanna find the total amount of fuel used from t equals zero to t equals 60, we just integrate this equation. We integrate from zero to 60 r of t dt, because this will give us the um, antiderivative of r of t. So here we can just um, just use it again. So use our calculator again. Yeah, we set up an integral. Let's go to this numerical integral. So from zero to sixty, and for this function, ten plus eight sine of x over 60 dx. And you should get about 820.65. So to the nearest gallon, that'll be 821. So the answer will be D. All right, 85, the function f is defined on the open interval from 0.4 to 2.4. And has first derivative f prime giving by f prime of x is equal to the sine of x squared. Which of the following statements are true? So we have to check, basically we want to look at um, the behavior of the derivative and recognize, or uh, you know, also go into like, you know, if it's increasing, decreasing, and you know, concave up and to concavity as well. So this is um, dealing with inflection. So let's, let's first just, let's go to our graphing calculator and graph this and analyze the graph. So we're gonna go to our graphing screen. And we're looking from zero to 2.4, so let's zoom in over here. All right, so let's draw a sketch. What's going on here? Okay, 
Can't really see what's going on over there, but then we only care up to 2.5, so. We don't I mean, we only care up to 2.4, so we don't really have to worry anything beyond that. But um, so here's the thing. I, I assume that what they're trying to um, assess is that you know that when you're analyzing the derivative of a function, you don't simply look for like the highest point to find the maximum and the lowest point to find the maximum. You, you focus on the sign, because remember this is the derivative f prime. So when there's, when it's a ma when there's a maximum, the graph of f, so if we have a maximum of f, so let's say this is f. The derivative changes from positive to negative. And when we have a, this is a max or a local max, we could say, and a local min would be when the derivative changes from negative to positive. So if we're looking at the graph of F prime, the local max will occur here. Because we're going from increasing to decreasing, we're going from positive to negative. So um, let's see what the value is over there. So it looks like we have a relative minimum. Let's analyze the graph. Yeah, so we have a relative uh, intersect of about 1.77. So we have a relative max of 1.77. So there is a relative max on this interval. So a, one would be true. Now relative min would occur where we go from negative to positive. But you see it intersect, it doesn't get to the x-axis, it doesn't, doesn't get to zero until past you know 2.4 and 2.5. So there's not gonna be a relative minimum on this. Um, you can see that the graph, I mean, I could do now a little bit if you want. See, it looks like it's over here. Let's see if we analyze um, what that zero would be. Yeah, it doesn't occur. See, it doesn't it doesn't cross back until two points till past two point five. So there is no there is no relative minimum on this interval because it doesn't occur until two point five. Now inflection points. Inflection points, remember, occur when the graph goes from increasing to decreasing, or from decreasing to increasing. So we want to see if there are there two inflection points. So there actually are because an inflection point would be over here or up here. And another one would be over here because the graph in goes from increasing to decrease or the derivative, I guess, and which would be the graph as well in a way. Um, well, let me be more clear. Um, an inflection point occurs when you're changing from the derivative or when you're, okay, so an inflection point occurs essentially when the derivative goes from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. So you think of it, think of the inflection points as being like the maximums or minimums of the derivative. And, it, and there are two of them. There are, there are two of them on this interval. So this would, because there's one right there, there's one at the bottom down there. I zoom in again. So you can see one over here down here. So then, so, so then one or three, one and three are valid. So the answer would be D.